Hey Jamie, um, this is just a quick video to uh, to help you set up your um, your limit switches. So as you can see, this is my machine. It's running uh, Gobble 1.1. Um, I built this machine from scratch, so uh, it's not the best looking machine to look at. Um, but anyway, back to the switches. So. If you look at the switch, the switches that I'm using, I don't know if you can see this, but you see the pins are labeled N C N O and G. So G would be your common your signal. Um, N O is normally open and N C is normally closed. So in a circuit, um, an open switch is one that would would be a basically a broken circuit, um, and normally closed would be a closed circuit that would open when the switch was active. So you want to set your limit switches up for gobble um, normally open so that when the switch closes or the limit is hit, it closes that circuit. Um, <clears throat> so on the gobble, I'm oh, sorry, the Protonia board, if you look in here, see that's where my limit switches go. So you'll see N stops, X, Y, and Z. So when you're setting your machine up, your origin point is always the top left corner of your bed. Um, depending on whether you have a moving table or a moving gantry, um, that would affect which direction that axis moves in. So in my case, because I'm using a moving bed, um, I had to invert my y-axis um, so that it homes there and not here. If it homes here, essentially all that would mean is that the image that it carves would start here and end there, so it would basically mill it upside down. Now, my machine is currently sitting at the zero point, so you can see it's at the very top of the z-axis. Uh, it's all the way to the right on the x-axis and it's all the way the table is all the way at the bottom but technically the tool is all the way at the top of the y-axis so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this machine away from its origin point <clears throat> here let's go cables Okay, so uh, let's go down. Just gonna move the Z axis down. And I'm gonna move my X axis. So let's just pick up the feed rate here. And I'm going to... Now, this, this gets a little bit tricky. On the y-axis, you've got to imagine that it's not the actual bed that you're moving, but it's the actual tool point that you're moving. So now, in my case, um, the, the logic would dictate that if, you were, if I were to hit y minus the bed should move that way but in fact your machine should be set up so that when you hit minus the tool should move down so in this case my bed's going to move up so if i hit the y-axis here you see my bed's moving up <clears throat> so now i'm going to run a homing sequence and you're going to see the machine run to zero. It's going to hit the switch, it's going to back off. And then that's how it knows where its zero point is. So we're just going to go and home the machine. <clears throat> and you'll see immediately the axes move. And it's going to hit that switch, and it's going to back off. And then that's, that's the axis done. 
and then this axis is going to move along with this one. We're going to hit their switches. And there you go. That's a homed machine. So at the end of your homing cycle, your machine should end up at zero on the Cartesian plane. Now, another thing that's worth mentioning, and this is something I figured out the hard way, is the axes have inputs for limits at both ends. However, when Gerbil uses a homing sequence, all it uses are the zero switches. So it completely ignores the switches at the ends of the axes. I wouldn't say these switches are completely useless though, because if you were using Gerbil using the hard limits feature, which you can find here, Firmware settings, you will find that uh, hard limits. So we looking here. So hard limits is a boolean value. Boolean means it's either a one or zero. If you want to switch hard limits on, you just change that to a one and uh, save the settings. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna save it because I'm gonna describe the issues that I had with hard limits. So what a hard limit is, is that um, if your machine is operating and there's a slight miscalculation or something goes wrong and the machine overruns an axis and hits the far end, like here for example. Now, if that were to happen, it's quite, it would probably be quite likely that the machine's already running. So, um, you know, stopping it in time would be a, a problem. That's why one of these is very handy. It's uh, an emergency stop switch. Mine is just loose at the moment, so I just hold it in my hand when I'm milling parts. Um, I'm gonna mill, make a little panel for the front of the machine here where I'm gonna mount the buttons and the switches. So um, there's also a pause button, uh, a stop button, um, and, and I believe there's one more button. I stand to be correct on that. But uh, yeah, it allows you to very quickly control the machine from, from the machine itself. Um, <clears throat> now, the problem that I had with hard limits is my spindle motor is putting out a frequency that's interfering with my hard limit switches because as you can see, my, my, my limit switch cables are just bare cables. They're not shielded or anything. So um, what was happening is as soon as my spindle engages, the, uh, it would trigger a false alarm on the on the hard limits and the machine was, would lock up. So it took me a while to figure that out, but um, yeah, so in the meantime, I'm not using hard limits. Um, I've just got to be extra careful and, and you know, stand there while it's milling with my, with my hand on the, on, the, on the emergency stop button. So um, Jamie, I hope this helps you um, set your limit switches up and uh, if you have any more questions, I mean, just feel free to shout and I'll uh, make another video. Cool. Cheers, guys.